Do you like silly books? Do you like to laugh? Do you like old English? And do you like books that don't stick on topic, but go on to progressive digressions that take you into buttonholes and the subjects of how important a nose can be, as well as various articulation of the finer points of sieges? Well, if you answered yes to all of those, or at least most of those, I would highly recommend Lawrence Stern's Tris Tram Shandy. Now, this is a part of the Great Books Collection, which was in collaboration between the University of Chicago and the Encyclopedia Britannica that wanted to bring the most important literary treasures of the Western world. They narrowed it down and to, I, I, I don't know how many books, maybe 50 books, and Lawrence Stern's Trish Tram Shandy was a part of it. So I knew that many more intelligent men than myself had considered it a work of art. I had put it off, however, because it was written in the 1700s, first published in 1759, the other volumes following uh, years after that. Um, you know, older books written in an older time, sometimes I feel... Uh, sometimes I'm excited about it, but going back to the 1700s, I wasn't sure. I had never read another novel from the 1700s, but I'm glad I did. I really enjoyed Lawrence Stern's humor. He, he, he has written this book, and it is a book like no other book that I've read. Um, wh what I meant by progressive digressions, as he's telling this story, it is the, the eponymous tale of Tristram Shandy, this fictitious character who has all of these circumstances revolving around his birth. And as the author is trying to tell the, 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 the story of how Trish Tram was born, he is going into these digressions and then like, oh, but you should have known that my father loved this philosopher and this philosopher said this. But in order for you to understand that, we need to talk about chambermaids and buttonholes and how a fortress can be surrounded by bat I mean he just goes on and on on these on these weird alleyways of thought and ideas and so much of it is right ridiculous I felt uh throughout a lot of it I was laughing um and I felt like I it was the type of sense of humor that I got in Seinfeld I don't know if you were a fan of the 90s sitcom it was a big hit in America and it was a show about nothing. Um, and Tristram Shandy is, although it's a book about love, and it's a book about family, and it's a book about birth, uh, and many things in life, um, so much of it is about nothing. Or making something out of nothing, or sometimes making nothing out of something. So it's, it's difficult to describe this book. Have you ever read James Joyce? Now, I have not read a lot of modernists and postmodernists, but one thing about James Joyce, when you read his Ulysses, uh, which I've read some of it, or Finnegan's Wake, which I've read none of it, it's very difficult to follow because the author is using sort of stream of consciousness rather than kind of clearly telling you a story with, with the type of plot and sequence of events that you've come to expect when you hear stories or watch stories. Uh, James Joyce sort of just goes all over the place and he's just talking and, and, and just streaming out these sentences and words and you're trying to make sense out of it. Well, that's sort of what Lawrence Stern does in Trish Tram Shandy. And I've read, there's a little controversy. Some people think Lawrence Stern was the innovator or one of the primary uh, influences on many of the postmodern or modernist writers that started to explore with various ways of writing the novel, such as Virginia Woolf and uh, James Joyce and other people uh, that I have not read. Um, but while it was difficult for me to get through Joyce, I was able to laughingly, heartily, merrily, gaily get through Lawrence Stern's Trish Tram Shandy because uh, for the most part, if it goes through the story, you it takes a long time for Trish Tram Shandy to finally get born. And by the time he gets born, you don't care because you don't care that it's a story about nothing. You're laughing all the time. Now, I will say this. It was written in the 1700s, so there's a lot of words that you're not going to understand. Have you ever read Shakespeare and you're like, 
I heard people think it's a great, he's a great playwright, but I don't understand a word of it because the language is somewhat archaic. Well, Tristram Shandy is less archaic or less uh, difficult to understand than Shakespeare, in my opinion, um, but still challenging in some parts. And I did find myself using the dictionary a lot. Trish, uh, Lawrence Stern uh, references many of the influential thinkers, such as Locke or uh, other, other novelists, other writers from that time, uh, religious writers, because Lawrence Stern was a well-read man. Lawrence Stern worked as, I believe, an uh, Anglican cleric, so sort of like a priest, um, and he didn't really, he didn't really write much in his life until Trish Tramshandy. He kind of dabbled here or there, but he nailed it with Trish Tramshandy. I read that it wasn't really a big success with a lot of the elites at the time, but because it was so humorous and there was a little bodiness to that, what I mean by that is, you know, sort of, sort of dirty and sexual in some ways, lots of undertones, lots of puns, uh, double entendres and, and all of that. Uh, it was a huge hit with the people of London and um, and many of the great thinkers such as uh, uh, Samuel Johnson, the great literary critic, critic, thought it wasn't very good and then Schopenhauer thought it was great and Goethe liked it. Um, lot, so there's a lot of people who are going to like this novel and a lot of people who won't. But if you have a peculiar sense of humor and you you you, you don't care that things are neat, but you want to have fun, then I recommend Lawrence Stern's Trish Tram Shandy. Uh, some of the parts made me laugh more than any comedy movie has ever made me laugh. Um, uh, this, this character, I'm not going to spoil it, not that I could spoil it, but this character, uh, Uncle Toby, Trish Tram Shandy's uncle, he's, he's obsessed with his hobby horse of... Uh, building forts and analyzing forts because he suffered a wound to his groin from a large object striking it and it goes into his his ability to possibly love make towards the end and his character is such a contrast to his brother Mr. Shandy who turns every encounter in in the world into a philosophy and theorizes and sees everything from a different light there's various characters all of them are funny, even though they're so different. Some are more serious, some are more fun, some some are more gay, uh, but they're all hilarious when seen in that light. Um, marriage uh, is a topic that comes up. You know, the difficulty for men to understand women, and the difficulties of men to control their passions. Um, so there are gems and nuggets of wisdom within this ridiculous novel. Uh, you know, which makes it great because you're having fun and you're. You're learning how other great minds have thought of the typical human problems that we all deal with, uh, regardless of the time. Um, like I said, Tristram Shandy, written by Lawrence Stern, was published in the middle of the 18th century. And so it might not be up your alley. I'm not the type of person who just loves and hunts after novels written in the 1700s. I sort of was out of any book that I was interested in and I wanted to wait to go to the bookstore until they were having a big sale. Yeah, I'm very frugal, uh, but why not? Um, and uh, so I was like, God, I really want to read a story. And I was kind of in, you know, a mood where I didn't want to read everything, anything too heavy. And I had heard that Trish Tram Shandy was a comedy. So I said, well, let's give it a try. And as I started it, I thought, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get into this. But slowly, as I caught the rhythm in, in not taking anything too seriously, I fell in love with it. And I found myself enjoying it uh, for many sections, more than most books. Um, there were sections where I just, I couldn't make heads or tails of of what the joke was or what the author was trying to say or if he was trying to say anything. And sometimes the the author's jokes and 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 uh, ideas don't make sense until later on in the ch in in the book. And he's often addressing you, the reader, uh, and talking about your intelligence and your sensibilities and your modesty. So this is a, a novel that uh, sort of breaks a lot of the rules 
Um, I have read, I spoke about a little bit of a controversy of its legacy. I have read that there is a little controversy on whether or not it was so innovative as many people have praised it to be, or whether or not there was already a tradition of sort of this um, new style of writing novels. You can tell that Lawrence Stern was deeply influenced by Cervantes, who wrote Don Quixote because he mentions it over and over again. And... Uh, I guess Lawrence Stern became very famous, and I read that the abolitionists, uh, so this is before America was a nation when this novel came out. This is before slavery was ended, and there were abolitionists who had, who had, uh, entreated Lawrence to, to, to contribute to the abolitionist movement of abolishing slavery, and there was one section in it where Lawrence Stern really does lay a great argument uh, against slavery. Not that we need it today, but perhaps people back then did. So, um, there's so much humor, so much wackiness, so much, uh, so much fun, but also wisdom. And if you find yourself bored and you want to take a gamble, I mean, I was gambling. I didn't actually, I was pessimistic going into Lawrence Stern's Tristram Shandy. I thought, I'm not going to like it. And I loved it. Even though I didn't understand everything, and I had to use my dictionary a lot and learn words that probably are never spoken of again. I don't know if you, the side note, but when you look up words, if you ever use Google to do that and you just say define this word, it will give you the definition, which is nice. But if you press that bottom arrow, you can see the popularity of the word through time. And a lot of the words I was looking up with were pretty dead. Um, and I, I like, I like, learning dead words for some reason that's a kind of a weird peculiarity of me but if you're someone who likes a strange novel or who just wants to give it a try you want to have fun you want to know why Trish Tram Shandy is part of the Great Books Collection I recommend Lawrence Stern's Trish Tram Shandy if you have any questions or comments if you've read it if you're a fellow Shandian if you know more than I do and want to correct anything I've said Put it down in the comments and give me a thumbs up and I will see you on the next book review. My name is Ryan Freeman. Bye-bye.